That'll move us on to my favorite segment of the podcast, Player Puzzle. Player Puzzle. Yeah. Let's do it. So with so many drummers out there, it's hard to tell the difference, but some stand out so well that they're absolutely recognizable. And Player Puzzle will provide three hints to see if Adam can guess who's playing. Let's see if we can stump him. How many times have you stumped me so far? Once. Just the one, and it was Royster? Royster. It was Royster, it was yeah. Pu- yeah, it was Oyster. <laughs> yeah. And that one, admittedly, was borderline cheating. I chose, like, an old photo with, like, symbols he didn't play anymore and a really old clip. Yeah, he's just such a chameleon, like, playing-wise. That's why it was so difficult to go from the audio. But I'm going Mm -hmm. for for close to strike out here. I'm trying to get them all. So go ahead and click on 50 BPM. 50 BPM is the title of this clip, and we don't know who it is. Let's see. I think I know already. <laughs> oh, man. I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Okay, so if now I might be wrong here, but I, I think I'm remembering this is taken from a live performance in like a PASIC type setting. Yeah, is that the video? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got that part right. So yeah, okay, so I think I know what it is. Um, this drummer has done a few videos like basically exploring the landscape of a very slow tempo. I've seen him do it all the way down to like 35 BPM, which is just like, fuck you, dude, 35 BPM, are you kidding? Um, But yeah, I, I, okay, so I'm 90 plus percent sure I know who this is. But for those playing at home, let's go ahead and keep going. What is our, uh, what's our fun fact about this, this mediocre drummer we're talking about today? This, (laughs) this very mediocre. Semi-talented dude. Drummer. Used to be in a Senegalese band when he was around age 18, 19. Senegalese. Can we unpack what that word means? <laughs> like a, a band from Senegal. From Senegal. That doesn't help me at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Goodness. I don't know what that's... like hyper Latin, Afro Cuban. Hyper Latin. Yeah. When you get so Latin, it's hyper Latin. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, really abstract, really ethnic music l- for sure. L- let me tell. We'll we'll show a kit photo. Okay, okay. So this is deceiving though, because that's a sonar kit, and this guy is not a sonar artist. Hmm. Um, he is a Tama artist, so this must be a bit of an older photo. But it's definitely right along the lines of the setup that he plays. This is brother Matt Garska. It is Matt Garska. Ooh. Now, w- one fact I'd like to point out too. Okay. The fun fact: the Senegalese man when he was age 18, 19 was from an interview where you were five feet to his right. Oh, I remember being this. Interview- I think it was for a Vic Firth event a long time ago. A long time ago, yeah. Robert Sput was to your right. Oop. And Aaron Spears was there, too. It, yeah, a lot of drummers were yeah, there. Yeah, and Kaz was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And there's a lot. It's funny if you find these uh, Vic Firth interviews and stuff. Adam's just kind of like in... The background? I asked the question in one of them, and you I did think. A, yeah. You did ask Matt a question about, like, what concepts did you discover that helped unlock new potentials? I remember that. And his answer was just, all of them, bro. All of all them. All of them. All of them <laughs> sure. unlock potential. And I'm sure. like, what a garbage answer. <laughs> just, like, it doesn't help any answer well, any question. And the thing with, with somebody like Matt, and you'll see this theme throughout all of his his interviews, he's, he's very big-brained in mm-hmm. that he's, like, contemplating, like, much larger ideas than sometimes what what people are asking. Like they're asking for a simple answer and sometimes he he doesn't give you that because that's not how he thinks about things, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything sort of trees off into much larger, bigger picture concepts. And sometimes it can be difficult for people who think that way to sort of like re-simplify to like, to answer the question that people are actually asking. It it gets very, very tricky. He's definitely... um, you know, high level artistry looks like that sometimes. It's confusing to hear, hear people explain themselves in that way. But so I'm curious why. At what point was he playing this sonar kit that we have? So here? the 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 code name was Louis de Mulel, uh, <laughs> and um, it was it was just the caption of the photo on Instagram. He was recording an album with Louis, 
And oh, okay. just, that was the setup. This is just a long time ago. I would assume before Tama uh, had endorsed him. Sure, but, sure, sure. Yeah, fascinating man. Ago. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a thousand little mannerisms and things in his playing that are so. I mean, for okay, I should say he's an excellent chameleon. Like he's phenomenal, like world class at sounding like whatever he wants to sound like. But with that said, he can't like mask his own musical voice. Uh, nobody really can. So there's little things in his playing that are just like, ah, yeah, that's him. You know, I don't, I don't know how to articulate it necessarily, but think along the lines of like, why does Benny Greb's groove sound like his groove? It just does, and that is what it is. We're not really going to quantify that in this podcast, at least. But uh, yeah, man. He, so in in a weird way, like Matt Garska will always be an easy one for me to hear. It's just nobody sounds exactly like him. And I had weirdly seen that clip years ago. That's a dope clip, by the way. If you haven't mm-hmm. seen that, was it Pasic that it was? Yeah, I think it was Pasic. Yeah. Um, I don't know, 2014. I've been yeah, a Pasic Matt Garska 50 BPM. Really, really cool. Yeah. Dope clip. Fun. Cool. Next drummer. Okay. Go ahead and click Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Here we go. confused because i heard things that threw me off many times i heard a trappiness of like luke holland i heard power like an aaron spears like like a like the like the kind of power that comes from and i i I don't mean this in any type of like negative way like a big person like a heavy handed like a large person i mean like serious power like playing through the toms you know and then I also heard like a like weird like drunk drumming sort of textures, which is not necessarily the style of like a Luke Holland or an Aaron Spears. Like a lot of those heavy hitters don't necessarily play with that drunk feeling. That was really tricky, but very high level. So this is not like too an abstract or totally unknown of a person, because man, that was really good. I don't know. That was a tough clip. Mm. Tough tough clip. Okay, so what we got? What's our what's our what's our hint here? Your fun fact is that this drummer's go-to coffee order is a maple latte with oat milk and cinnamon. Oh man, okay. So I suppose we have to open this up that it could be a female. We are an equal opportunity <laughs> sorry, sorry. podcast. <laughs> I'm a black coffee drinker. You ain't getting me with any of that that maple oat milk nonsense. Okay, I'm just kidding. You can drink whatever coffee you want. Um, man. That doesn't ha- well unless I've had coffee with them, which I don't can't remember <laughs> anybody getting that Maybe coffee. Maybe you could have. <laughs> Maybe okay. So let's go. Let's go. Hint three uh, to our kit photo. Yeah, it's Golden Boy kit. Huh. So now I'm thinking the first name I said might be correct. What color is the hardware? On this DW kit, we got a DW kit with a crazy burl finish. I don't know. It's Beautiful a, it's, finish. It's some finish. I have no idea. You have to you have to guess that on your own. I only provide the kit photo. I don't provide kit details. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. I guess it makes sense. I got to unpack the whole thing, right? Interesting. So I'm a little thrown off with the Earthwork Earth Earthworks microphones because I don't know that this drummer uses those. But given that it is in a gym. I've seen this drummer do that. I'll tell you how I'm working towards. I I think it's Luke Holland, but let me talk out why. DW Remo for sure. I see Vic Firth sticks on the snare, which you Luke was with Vic Firth for quite a while. He's recently moved over to Minel as a signature stick um, with, with Minel now. But the cymbal setup looks a lot like his. He'll really oftentimes do two crashes, neither of which are very big. They're a little on the high side. For my preference, I've seen him do 10, 14 or 10, 16, whatever these toms are. Um, I've seen him record in a gym. That looks like his signature stack. It explains the trappiness, but that was some powerful playing from him. 
like more powerful than I'm used to hearing from him. Interesting. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to say this is Luke Holland. It is Luke Holland. Oh, yes. Got it. Man, this dude has turned up. He's been lifting weights. Luke, you out here lifting? What you doing, brother? That clip was from forever ago. It may, maybe four years ago. Man, I've also gotten coffee with Luke Holland, and you exactly. didn't order a maple oat milk, bro. You his other His other go-to coffee order <laughs> is a cold brew. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, he, that would have been my guess. Yeah. Yeah, cold, it was years ago. He, he did a video very recently where he answered like the 20 most asked questions, and I cannot believe that... Coffee the, was uh, in there? The, yeah, Who like cares? what's your go-to coffee order was... One of the twenty most asked questions to him, <laughs> what a stupid and he, question. he either goes, you know, to one extreme or the other, which is extremely sugary, milkshakey, or just black latte death. or black. Yeah, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Funny man. Yeah, I haven't seen Luke in a, in a couple of years. I think the last time I saw him was at that Roland event mm-hmm. um, when they launched the TD Seventeen. That was a really really cool event. He was there. He actually performed at that. Um, and then at Nam, we've hung you know a few times before then, but. He's never been to this studio, but he was at the the oh, last yeah. studio, the older studio at the old house. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's an interview with him back on uh, OrlandoDrummer.com. I think what we talked about most of the time was balancing the desire to do like touring and, and also make content. And like, how do you balance kind of between those two? Because he did a very good job of sort of splitting himself down the middle of being a touring gigging drummer, but also putting out content with some sort of regularity, right? Um, and so it was interesting to have a conversation with him about balancing those two, though admittedly that whole landscape has changed or at least simplified now that touring has kind of been off the table for a, a year, you know, and still going. But anyway, man, awesome guy. I've known him for a while. Um, and that was a very tricky one because that playing was uh, impressively powerful. That's why it's the only reason I didn't say it was him initially is like I don't consider him to be that heavy handed. But man, that was some uh, that was some thick playing thick yeah. with three cues. You know what I mean? <laughs> thanks for watching this clip from the orlando drummer podcast i hope you enjoyed it if you are in any way looking to make yourself a better drummer online which you probably are it's why you click this video make sure to click this link up here wherever it is orlandodrummer.com it's an online drum school in the style of netflix trust me you will find something you like but don't take my word for it seven day free trial at the link in the description make sure to sign up for that see if you like it we'd love to have you on board thanks guys